Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to recreate the effect we made for the last prisoner project. Uh, more specifically, we are going to uh, see how we can rotate a 3D object on scroll using uh, Lenis. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, let's go. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to use um, the code we created in a previous video. Um, so the video is, um, well, I'm going to link it to the description. It's the video about how to set up a basic scene in 3GS. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, um, go check it out so you can um, see how we ended up with uh, all of that. It's going to make much more sense. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet and you are familiar with 3GS, I'm just going to go over uh, everything pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, just so you know, we're going to use the code we created in this video, in the previous video, as a border plate. All right. So that's what we have for the moment. Um, pretty basic. We have our embed in Webflow with a canvas and a class of WebGL. Then in our uh, code, let me make it a bit bigger. We have um, our canvas, our scene, uh, we have uh, our sizes and our event listener so that the scene resize um, with the window, with our window. Um, then we have our camera, we have a simple cube with a mesh normal material that's um, rotating, we have a simple animation. And then we have our render. Very basic, um, but it's working fine. All right, so the next step is going to be uh, to install and import Lenny Scroll, and then we'll see how we can rotate first this cube, and then we'll uh, import the model we are we used for the last prisoner project, and uh, we'll rotate this model instead of the cube. All right, so maybe let's stop the animation. Perfect. Uh, let's go to the Lenis documentation. All right, so let's copy this. Let's close the local server. Let's install Lenis. Let's not forget to um, start the dev server again. And then let's import Lenis. I'm going pretty fast with uh, all of this because this is a template uh, I am using pretty much all the time. Uh, I've talked about it a lot. So if you're interested in that and uh, you have no idea how it works, go check the videos about it. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's uh, save. I think we need to import some, uh, to add some CSS as well. Yeah, perfect. All right, so let's do that. We will be good to go. One last, one last thing we need to do before um, publishing the, the website is to add a, a wrapper so that our page is, um, is uh, the, the height of our page is bigger than 100 VH. So I'm going to crawl this one, scroll wrapper, and um, up. I'm going to make it 500 VH. All right, I think that's good. All right, so let's refresh, no error. Let's see if I scroll, perfect. We see that Lenis is working and that we have uh, different informations. So we are gonna see uh, actually two ways of rotating the cube. The first one, um, well, let's see the two method and uh, then let's talk about it. So we can see that we have some informations right there and I can see that I have something called velocity. So maybe let's console log this one um, to see what we have. So if I do Lenis and velocity, yeah, we can see that I have the velocity of my scroll. So I don't think I need to explain um, to explain more what this is, but basically, yes, as I'm scrolling down or up the page, I have a value um, that that's uh, equal to the speed of 
the the scroll anyway um so yeah so maybe you can use this tool to rotate our cube uh so let's you know what let's take this so let's copy it let's go under our cube and we don't need this and maybe we can do something like mesh dot rotation dot x uh, plus equal lenis dot velocity and um, the value is going to be a too big i think well let's see so okay my cube is rotating but it's super fast um, and also we can see that the rotation is on x maybe we want to put it on the y axis so let's do times 0 0.05 okay still too much let's do something like that okay much better so that's cool there's two issues with this method in our case so let's check this so i'm at the top of my page we can see that the cube is facing the camera um, yeah the cube is facing the camera if i'm scrolling down it's working fine um, but now if i refresh my page i'm here let's scroll to the top that's <laughs> that's just bad luck Let, let's go back yeah and now the, the cube is not not facing the camera so yeah that's the first issue the second one is would be that uh, if i'm using the scroll bar um, it doesn't work as well so i think this method is cool i think for a certain project you might want to use it but in our case uh, it doesn't work so let's maybe see if we have something else in the documentation um, let's just search for velocity so yeah that's the current scroll velocity it's as simple as that and we can see here that we have progress and it's uh, the scroll progress from 0 to 1 meaning that well, meaning that when i'm here the scroll progress is equal to 0 and if i go to the bottom of the page it's equal to 1 so maybe i can use that so instead of using lenis.velocity i'm going to use progress um, I'm gonna remove the plus here and let's see so we can see that it's working but the value is not big enough and it's because it's going from zero to one so maybe let's uh, let's multiply it by uh, let's try something like 20 and yeah it's working and now we can see that if i refresh my page here we go back and it's working um, which is cool and actually why uh, I didn't see that before actually but that's uh, kind of interesting so the thing is that if I'm here the um, Let's try something because that's actually something I um, didn't think about before making this video and it's that the rotation of my mesh is equal to zero and when I start scrolling um, the, the rotation changes because we are changing the uh, rotation y on scroll so maybe I can do something like that so I can go here and let's put it here let's refresh and yeah it's working so let's take something like that let's refresh yeah <laughs> perfect all right and we can see that if i'm using the scroll bar it's working as well so yeah as simple as that um maybe there's a better solution maybe in some in certain cases this will uh, not be the good solution for a project like the last prisoner project it was a good solution at first we uh, used the cheese app as well but uh, yeah i really like this method and uh, yeah let's move on so now what we want to do is that we want to remove our cube and we want 
to import our 3D model. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to comment everything. I'm going to save and I'm going to open Blender. All right. So, um, I have a model like that, perfect. So that's the model we used. Um, very simple, you can export it in uh, GLTF. And that's what we did. The goal is not to talk about that in this video, but just to show you that uh, what the model looks like in Blender. All right, so I already exported it um, up here. And there's an issue. We cannot import GLGF model and GLB um, extend files in Webflow. It just doesn't work. Um, there's a wor work around that. It's not pretty. Uh, I wish uh, there was another solution, but there isn't for the moment. So that's what I'm, I'm doing. You can add the um, TXT extension at the end of your file. Oop. Do we have another one already? Oh, yeah, sorry. I clicked on don't add. Anyway, and if I do that, I can import it and it's working fine. All right, so first step is done. Now what we want to do, actually, let's publish. Now what we want to do is that we want to be to we want to be able to import that model. Um, to do that, we're going to use a GLTF loader. Actually, I'm going to copy the code because I don't want to make any mistake. All right, but you can import the GLTF loader from uh, 3GS. All right, now that it's done, what we can do. So let's go maybe under our cube. Is that we can use this GLTF loader. So I'm going to create a new instance called GLTF loader and I'm going to do new it's GLTF loader, just like that. All right. So now to load the model, I can do gflotl loader load. Then I need to provide the path to my file. All right. I'm not gonna, not going too much into details uh, in this. And then I can do something like scene add gltf dot scene. All right. Uh, this should be good. Let's save. Let's refresh. We don't have any error, but we don't see anything. That's okay. Uh, the first thing we will do is that we will add alpha to true. So for the moment, we can see that in Webflow, my background is white, but in um, the published website, the background is black. And it's because this is the 3GS scene and the background by default is black. So if I add alpha to true, I won't have any background. So what I see now is my HTML page and on top of that, I can see uh, the, the 3GS scene. So we can see that we have our pen. That's cool, but it's black. It's kind of small. Let's see what we can do. Maybe first um, we could uh, bring the camera a bit closer to the model. So let's do one. So we are changing the camera position here, which is cool. So first step done, but why is my pen black? And it's because I don't have any lights. We saw the cube before because the material was a mesh normal material and it doesn't need any lights. Um, yeah, it doesn't need any lights in our case. For the pen, we are using the mesh standard material and it's to be just like having um, an object in a dark room. You, you wouldn't see anything. So let's add some lights. Maybe I could put them. Yeah, I'm gonna put them here. So uh, we are gonna use three lights. So I'm gonna have the main light, um, and you can do 
we are gonna use a point light we can change the color and the intensity um, we're gonna change the position of the light by default the position is gonna be zero 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 so the the center of the of the scene uh, i want it to be a bit above and on the side so i can do main light position set uh, and i'm gonna do one one and zero all right let's copy this i'm gonna call this one second light and i'm just gonna do minus one and minus one and the last light i want to add I'm not even sure I need it, uh, we'll see, honestly. Um, it's an ambient light. And I'm gonna do white and uh, one. Uh, I think, yeah, better. Let's add all of our light in our scene. So main light, second light, ambient light, let's save. Now we can see our model. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, le let's see uh, without the ambient light. I yeah. think it's a bit better. Um, yeah, I like it like that. Okay. Um, all right, we're almost done. So we have our scene ready. Um, we already know how we can rotate our cube. So let's do the same thing for a model. Um, I'm gonna copy the, co the code and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do let model equal gltf.sin and instead of adding the gltf.sin I'm gonna add the model all right and then all right then on scroll I want to rotate the model all right let's not do y all right, and it's X this time. And it's working great. And let's let's refresh. We might have the, the same problem as before. Yeah. So now the pane is facing the is facing the camera. If I scroll a little bit, yeah. So let's do the same thing as we did for the cube. Um, all right. Save. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. Um, I think there's different ways again of doing things. That's a, a simple way of of, um, of using Linux to rotate a, a 3D object. I like it. Um, you could have we could have used uh, GZAP as well. Um, maybe in the next video if you want to interested in that uh, let me know what you guys think if you have any questions i kind of went a bit fast on a few things and that's because a lot of the concepts uh, we used in this video we uh, talked about them in previous videos already and i don't want to, to repeat myself too much so yeah don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions um, comments anything see ya